The smudge tool seems like a useless tool, especially when it comes to photo editing. If you select it and try to apply it, have a look. It is slow. It's still processing. I'm going to speed this up. It is destructive and it doesn't seem to do anything useful, especially when it comes to editing a photo. Similarly, the blur tool feels very destructive. But today in this video, I'm going to share with you use cases of these tools that's going to make it harder for us to live without it. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now these tools kill it when it comes to masking. Let's say you select the quick selection tool and at the top you click on select subject. Pro tip, if you click on the drop down right here and choose cloud and if you're okay with using cloud it does a much better selection when you pick select subject it takes a little bit of time but it's finer once the selection is active let's click on the mask button now so far it looks fine but as soon as we put it in a darker background because this was originally on a brighter background the edges start to show up let's click on the adjustment layer icon choose solid color and for this example pick black hit ok now place it under the subject so far this looks good, but as soon as you zoom in, you begin to see all of these edges and it's only in some of the areas. In these cases, it is very easy to handle it with the smudge tool. Let's select the smudge tool, strength 50% is fine. Let's select the mask, not the subject layer, but the mask of it. And now, all you have to do is to first of all make the brush smaller by using the square bracket keys and then just simply push it in like so. That's it. So fantastic. And because this image has a shallow depth of field, the edges would be softer. So it does that too. So as soon as you push it in, it not only pushes it in, but also creates a softer edge. You may want it, you may not want it, but in most cases, it works in your favor. Similarly, let's do it right here. Any other places? See this edge? It's so harsh. So all we do is make the brush slightly larger and just push it in. That's all push it in. And if there are areas where you don't want to push it in, but also need a softer edge, all you got to do is to not switch to another tool, but just push it in, bring it out. Now you have a softer edge. Similarly, let's do the same possibly right here. Push it in, bring it out. It's much better. Now you can remove the finer details with the brush, but you get the idea of how it works. Have a look at this area. All you got to do is to just push it in a little bit, push it in there, See how easy this is to fix? It also creates a very nice soft edge so that it looks natural. Similarly here, there, done. This is so darn good. You can also do it here. See how easy that was? And as I told you, if you want a softer edge, just push it in, pull it out. You now have a softer edge and it works so nicely. Now you can take your time to do the entire thing. For example, in this case, I'm gonna push it in there maybe work the hair with different tools, but see how useful this much tool is. I have another example for you. And this time I'm going to open that up in the brand new Photoshop beta because it has the brand new, much improved select subject cloud. Now, if you still want to use the regular version, absolutely fine. This is just to showcase one particular feature. So if I were to use the regular select subject, which is the device one, and if you click on select subject, it does a pretty good job, but it misses out on some of the areas. If I were to create a mask with this, see, it just misses out on those gaps. However, if you use the newer technology, hopefully it's going to be better. At least I hope so. You want to make sure the default is set to cloud. By the way, if you want to learn more about the new selection technology, there is another video about it. Watch that later. But for right now, let's click on select subject and have a look at this. This is so good. It even got all the little details so darn good. It always helps to have a good starting point. And if there's a technology that can help you achieve that, I recommend trying it. Now, once the selection is active, let's click on the mask button and let's create a black background as before. So I'm going to create a solid color fill adjustment layer like so. And everything looks fine. Even the hair selection, it's pretty good. It needs some correction, but apart from that, it's all fine. But if you have a look at this area, this is where the problem is in the edges. And why do we have a problem after all? If you have a look at the original image, you would notice that this hand is out of focus. And that's what creating the issue and having the background seep into the edges. So for it, again, let's select the smudge tool, turn on the mask by clicking on it, go to the mask, you want to make sure the mask is selected. And all you have to do is to just push it in like so fixed. Similarly here, this area doesn't need it. But this area, maybe that can be helped with this. And there you have it. So easy fix. Now there are times when you don't want to push it in or pull it out. Those are the times where you need to use the blur tool. In this case, I wanted to separate myself and put it on a different background, which is this. By the way, I've created it with a combination of a lot of gradients. 
Now, I usually use the pen tool for it because of the smooth curved line. So all you have to do is to select the pen tool, you already know this, click, click and drag to create a path. Now, I've already made the path and if you want to turn it into a selection, we need to go to paths, inside of that, hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail to have a selection right there. Now, if we mask it out by clicking on the mask button, this looks all right. But as soon as you zoom in, the edges are very harsh. If you have a look at the original photo, have a look, it has a softer edge because I'm shooting with f1.2. So it should be softer, right? Now I can use the smudge tool, push it in or pull it out, but I don't want that. With the mask selected, we can select the blur tool instead. Strength 50% is fine. And all you do is paint on the mask. That's it. See how much better it gets? Similarly here, this is very harsh. So I'm going to paint like so. Like so. See the edges? Very harsh. So paint a little bit there. Just match the blur with the blur of the surrounding areas. As you can notice, the surrounding areas are blurred. So the edges would be blurred too. And there will be some areas where you do need to push it in. And we will do that as well. Like so. So much better. And these areas need to be sharp. Maybe I need to blur this particular area, work on this particular area, but you get the point. You see how realistic we make a composite by blurring some edges more than others? For the areas we need to push it in, for example, this particular area, we can go back to the smudge tool and simply just push it. That's all. Done. So when it comes to masking, the blur tool and the smudge tool start to absolutely shine. For more of these little tips, and if you want to learn Photoshop from start to finish and beyond, with a structured path and more than 100 lessons where we move with hands-on projects that you follow along with, definitely check out Piximperfect Pro. Right now we have a spring offer going on for a very limited time. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.